Okay, uh, heard this game was popular. Going to play it. Heard this game's supposed to get really messed up. Just going to wait for that. Oh, I've forgotten their names now. What's this one? I forgot their names. I do read very fast, though. Monica? Let's see. This one's Monica, right? I think. Okay, so how I can remember her, she looks like Yuri from Tales of Asperia. Yep, that's why I'm playing this game. Yeah, because look, like, they're all begging me to join this club, and it's clear that they all are going to try to romance me or something. Or the other way around. Now, are there any choices in this? Like, because I think their branching paths might be a, just a linear story, but I don't know. I can't, might have to trouble between these two, because they kind of look similar-ish. Oh, God. Uh. Wait. Your favorite club member. Uh. Oh, God. Um. That you're my favorite club member alike? What if I don't have a favorite? What if I don't want to get into a relationship? Jeez, man. How about I just... Well, I just put stuff that I like. Oh, so wait. So do they hop whenever I pick a word? Hold on. Let's see. A fantasy. Yeah, she hopped. Uh, massacre. The free. Suicide? Uh, oh. She jumped. God, frightening. Okay, they do jump when you... Okay. I do read a lot. I listen to audiobooks as well. What are you trying to say? What, I couldn't have my own character sheet? Okay, yeah, I think... I think my thing... I think my thing is leaning towards Yuri more because I'm talking about her a lot. Maybe. That was a realistic movement right there. What in the world? That felt... Felt like... Whoa. <laughs> Like the little actual the little hop. Oh my god, over the S! How many has this been? Eh? You know, I'm gonna start doing that every time. Just to show you how much this video game does that. Eh? 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 Oh lord. Okay, now we gotta pick. Who should I show my poem to first? So, who's the one that's supposed to haunt me, really? She didn't even show up in the little thing. So this is the one with the pink hair, this is the one with the purple hair. This is my childhood friend, I think? That's what you said. This one's the, uh... Uh... Did you see Hold anything? on. My, my screen just tore at the bottom there. Is that supposed to happen? I could, couldn't have been me. See? The direction the sparkle protrudes. A noisy neighbor? An angry boyfriend? I'll never know. I wasn't home. I peer inside for a clue. No, I can't see. I reel, blind like a film left out in the sun. But it's too late. My retinas already scorched with a permanent copy of the meaningless image. It's just a little hole. It wasn't too bright. It wasn't too deep. Stretching forever into everything. A hole of infinite choices. Uh, I realize now that I wasn't looking in. I was looking out. And he, on the other side, was looking in. Monica. Dear Sunshine, the way you glow through my blinds in the morning. It makes me... Wait, hold on. Oh, they remixed it? That's cool. The way you glow through my blinds in the morning. It makes me feel like you missed me. Kissing my forehead to help me out of bed. Making me rub the sleepy from my eyes. Are you asking me to come out and play? Are you trusting me to wish away a rainy day? I look above. The sky is blue. It's a secret, but I trust you too. If it wasn't for you, I could sleep forever. But I'm not mad. I want breakfast. Ghost under the light. The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow. Bathing. It must be this one. The last remaining streetlight to have withstood the test of time. The last yet to be replaced by the sickening blue-green hue of the future. I battle. Calm. Breathing air of the present, but living in the past. The light flickens. I flick it back. Eagles can fly, monkeys can climb, crickets can leap, horses can race, owls can seek, cheetahs can run, eagles can fly, people can try. Wait, hold on. You already said that. But that's about it. What? Eh? Eh? And they're arguing over me. Stop! 
<laughs> she made them both feel embarrassed. Eh? Wait, what, what, huh? What, uh huh? I gotta write another one? I'm gonna need to write, what, huh? What, what's going on? Why? Let me look at my guide or something. I don't know what that is. Okay, I should have picked all the choices that did Yuri. Because, uh. Just see how it goes. Eh! 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 eh? She was killing somebody, wasn't she? Oh gosh, we got one of them that plays piano again. Here we go. I'm starting to feel like this is a game that's like one of those horror movies. You made something like a, it was going to be a nice story, so dark, uh, so that dark turn came from nowhere. That's what I feel like this is going to be. It's just going to be all casual, like a horror movie, then it's going to get bad. That's what I feel like is going to happen. I'm waiting for it still. Oh my gosh, dude. Oh my gosh. Dude, this is actually kind of making me smile a little bit. I'm not going to lie. This is really interesting. So this hand's mine. And I was holding it right there, I assume. Or How is it hard turning the page, then? If... What is this, a manga? Do you read this way? <laughs> eh? Wait, was she, looking at, was she looking at me the whole time? Hold on, I, ju I just noticed that. Uh, screen tour again. Is that supposed to happen? I saw that. I saw it. There was no change in the picture. Nothing. There's no other screen tear anywhere else except the bottom. Is that supposed to happen? Does she like it? I picked. I picked it uh, to her liking. So I want to see what she says about it. Oh, she said she wants to share it if it's with me. Okay. The raccoon. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a quick, for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scudding of a raccoon, scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange ten uh, tendencies as, a, on, as an, an ordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences, well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom, the bread, my hungry curiosity. The raccoon, and what does that say? I can't really read cursive well. Um, a something. Uh, the moon increments its increments its place and reflects that much more light off my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread, fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited. Perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to taken to following me. You could you could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread's always handy. Every time I branch my cutting knife, the raccoon uh, shows me its excitement. A rush of blood, classic Pelovian conditioning. I slice the bread, and I feel myself again. More daring, huh? So she's a murderer. She's a murderer! It's a twist that's gonna come up and... Or she's still dead, I don't know. So she'll tell me, she'll tell me who likes what, basically. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Piano. She says she's taking piano. Ooh. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue. An endless co cophony, cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing. Sine, cosine, tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a vinyl on a pizza, tr a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaningless load me. Is that supposed to be- Hold up. Whoa, 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 hold on. Okay. Oh, I thought something was about to happen there. Because I go, I, I went up, and it just like... What just happened? So do I- Oh no! Was I supposed to save the game there? Save me. Can I go back? Can I? Can I go? Oh god. Can I go? No. I should have saved there, shouldn't I? This is probably going to have to do something different with the story down the line. Don't forget to save the game. She's like the master of this. She knows what's going on. She knows she's in a game, right? I'm trying to decipher what these characters are. You never know when you might change your mind. Like now! 
or when something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this tip even about writing? What am I even talking about? She knows! She knows she's in a game right now. Eh? Bottles. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingling. But there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on a shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts in the bottle all in a row. My collection makes me a lot of... Uh, my collection makes me lots of friends. Each bottle of starlight to me amends. Sometimes my friends... Feel, uh, sometimes my friend feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Oh, she's talking about her getting drunk? Is that what she's talking about? My collection makes you lots of friends. Eat each bottle of starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friend feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friends after friends, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go, like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies, digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I'll blow... Is she even old enough to drink yet? Uh, and blow off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time has lapsed. Time elapsed. My empty s shelf could do some more. My friend's looking through my locked front door. Oh god. Finally all done. I open up and in come my friends. In they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf one after another, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading something, but all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. Oh my god, dude. Right, holy crap. I think it's like this is coming from you. Monica told her that? Eh. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time, I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if she doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better without spider lovers. And I'm going to tell everyone. Eh? This club store is going to be the death of me. Might be. From what I've been hearing, might be. Eh? Oh, so let's just say that... Just that one day Yuri asked to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. <laughs> oh, Lord Choices. Ugh. Um, I would walk home with Yuri. Yeah. Walking home with Yuri, huh? What is the thought of that? Did you see anything? Glitch. Was that supposed to happen? Look, I'm seriously starting to get freaked out. If it's, if it's screen tearing, because I swear I saw the screen flash for a second. I don't know. I just, look, I, I picked that choice, and I swear the screen tore after I picked that choice. So, I don't know. Eh? Eh? Yep. I heard today it was supposed to be a day everything goes down. So, I'm just waiting for that. Eh? Eh? Oh dang, she just lashed out. I suppose there's nothing wrong with that. Hm. Let's go, Loy. Ah. She quickly exits the room and I follow. Oh my god. Oh, okay, this is different. Once in the hallway, she suddenly puts her forehead against the wall. I spoke without thinking. How could I say something like that? Yuri. I just... Something about the way she said that made me feel so irritated. What's wrong with me? No, Yuri. I think you did the right thing. I wasn't expecting it, but it's it's not right for Monica to judge people like that. Hold on, let me take a look about what she, what she even said. Shall we go then? Yeah. Where are you two off to? Uh, we were just gonna make some tea, so we were just filling the water pitcher. Oh, okay. Sorry, I was just a bit curious. It's kind of a one-person job, isn't it? That's Monica. Please mind your own business for once. 
Or do you want me to tell? Or do you want to tell me there's just something wrong with helping Loy involve Loy in club activities? Oh my gosh! So she's like, she was like saying she was calling her out. She was saying she was like weak or something. I guess I don't know. Loy, how come even when I do something bad, you're being nice to me? Because nothing that you do is as bad as you make it seem in your head. Nobody's perfect. We have emotions and we can't always hide them anyway. But you always amplify things in your head. In your head. Your mind turns a light rain shower into a hurricane. Ah. No. Wouldn't you hate me for something as terrible as that? Why would I hate you? I can't hate someone for having emotions. What kind of friend would do that? Friend, you say? Ah, um. Yuri lifts her head. Loy. I really like being friends with you. <laughs> Thanks, Yuri. I like being friends with you, too. I feel kind of awkward saying something like that. But I'm doing my best to help Yuri feel better. Anyway. Ah, uh, yeah. Shall we go? Yeah. Yuri and I walk to the nearest water fountain. Once you fill up the water pitcher, we return to the classroom. <laughs> Why is that? Oh, here we go. Yuri opens the book with both hands. She holds it so that I don't have any harder of a time reading it or any from it. But as a result, her left arm is practically resting on top of my leg. Well, in that case, Yuri's already I sound like just a peppy dude. I like I'm full of pep. Yuri's already totally focused on reading again. I take a chocolate candy and pop it into my mouth. Then I take another chocolate and I hold it up to Yuri. She doesn't even look away from the book. She simply parts her lips as if the situation was completely natural. But that means I can't stop here. I, pr I, I apprehensively place a chocolate in her mouth. Oh, hey, there it is. Just like that, Yuri closes her lips over it. Eh? Yuri's expression suddenly breaks. Did, did I just... Yuri looks at me like she needs to confirm what just happened. Uh, um... Uh -huh. Did she drop it or did she eat it? Loy? So sorry. I guess I shouldn't have done that. Ah, that's... Well, you were just helping me. That's something that friends do. Right? I mean, not really in this kind of context, but... Yeah. That's all it was. Yeah. Then, you don't need to stop or anything. I, I see. The situation has gotten really tense. Yuri tries to return to the book. I can tell just by her expression that even she can't focus now. My heart is pounding. I like I like the little... things here. It's nice. I'm nervous to take another chocolate between my fingers. This time Yuri's eyes met meet mine. How did he even come to this? Yuri doesn't avert her gaze. And then there's her chest rising and falling to the rhythm of her breasts. I raise my arm. Ah. Like before, Yuri parts her lips. But it's different this time. I take the chocolate and place it in her mouth. I feel her hot breath in my fingers. Okay, everyone. Ah. Uh, um. Did you know that? She's at lunch by herself. It's a great time to find a quiet spot and do some reading. In fact, I always have some books with me. You could say I really enjoy reading. Well, that's one way to put it anyway. But, books are so full of amazing and inspiring people. People you want to fall in love with. People you just want to know would make, really good, would make a really good friend. Cheerful people who always put a smile on your face. Or deep thinkers and problem solvers who discover the mysteries of life. So, when you look at it that way, I'm surrounded by friends every day. You know? Those friends don't laugh at me. They don't tease me for spacing out all the time. They don't make fun of my body type. And they don't hate me for acting like a know-it-all. People say that about you? I know I'm, I'm not a know-it-all, Loy. It's the opposite. I don't know anything. I don't know how to talk to people. I don't know how to make people see me as normal. I don't even know how to make myself happy. I have all these feelings. And all I can do with them is read and write. It wasn't until now that I started sharing it with you that I really understood what I was missing all this time. But I haven't really done anything. No. That's wrong. Just being patient and respectful. That's really important to me. I know I'm a difficult, difficult person, Loy. I speak too slowly. I second-guess myself all the time. I read too deeply into things. But every time, you've always treated me just like anyone else. It's so rare that I feel comfortable with myself when I talk to others, but that's why every time I talk to you, I just feel really happy. I see. 
Well, I treat, I treat you how you deserve to be treated, Yuri. And if other people don't see it that way, then screw them. I mean, I just joined this club hoping I would make friends. And I would say I've had at least one success. Wouldn't you? Um, you put it that way. Yeah. We really are friends now, aren't we? Yuri puts her head in her hands. But this time she's smiling as she does it. Do you want to show me your poem? Yeah. I do. Let me get it for you. Alright, Beach. Uh, a marvel millions of years in the making, where the womb of Earth, of Earth chaotically meets the surface, under a clean blue sky and exp an expanse of bliss beneath gray rolling clouds and endless en enigma. The easiest world to get lost in is one where everything can be found. One can be blind. One can build a sand castle where the sand is wet, but where the sand is wet, the tide comes. Will it gently lick at their at your foundations until you give in, or will a sudden wave send you crashing down in the blink of an eye? Either way, the outcome is the same. Yet we still build sand castles. I stand where foam, I stand where the foam wraps around my ankles, where my toes squish into the sand. The, sand, the salty air is, the salty air is therapeutic. The breeze is gentle yet powerful. I sink my toes into the ultimately the ultimate boundary line, tempting by the fun foamy tendrils. Turn back and I abandon my peace to to a load at the shore. Drift forward and I return to Earth forevermore. Eh? Okay, hers, hers. Okay. The lady who knows everything. An old tale of a lady who wanders Earth. The lady who knows everything. A beautiful lady who has found every answer, all meaning, all purpose, and that was ever sought. And here I am, a feather. Lost adrift in the sky, victim of the, of the currents of the wind. Day after day I search. I search with little hope, knowing legends don't exist. When all else has failed me, when all ever has turned away, the legend is all that remains. The last dim star, the last dim star glimmering in the, in the twilight, twilight sky. Until one day, wind ceases to blow, blow, I fall and I fall and I fall and fall even more. Gentle as a feather, a dry quill, expressionless. But a hand catches me between the thumb and forefinger. The hand of a beautiful lady. I look and I look at her eyes and find no end to her gaze. The lady who knows everything knows what I am thinking. Before I can speak, she responds in a hollow voice. I have found every answer, all of which amount to nothing. There is no meaning, there is no purpose. And we seek only the impossible. I am not your legend, your legend does not exist. And with a breath, she blows me back afloat and I pick up a gust of wind. Well, don't worry about me, okay? You can go play with everyone else now, if you insist. Yay! I'm going to go home a little bit earlier today. Sayori? To Monica, I wasn't feeling well, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Before I can say anything else, Sayori cheerfully walks out of the classroom humming to herself. What about her poem? What? Okay. Eh? Okay, you three. Three. Hold on a second. Is it just me, or did you say something strange just now? Eh? Something did sound a bit unusual. Oh, this is where it's going to go down? Please tell me this. That's right. I deviated from usual catchphrase when addressing the club. C catchphrase? I don't have a catchphrase. Jeez. Why is the mood so weird today? Look, even Yuri isn't immune to it. Uh. Stagnating air is common foreshadowing that something terrible is about to happen. In your books, maybe. Look, the only thing different is that Sayori isn't here. Ah. It seems you're right. So much, to, so much so much, for you two being all lovey-dovey. Uh, no! First of all, stop misunderstanding my friendship with Sayori. And second, she's kind of been avoiding me today, so I didn't want to force it. Ooh. That curious expression coming from Yuri, of all people. Calm down, guys. I talked to her earlier and everything's fine. What'd she say? Anyway, we need to figure out the rest of the festival preparation, so... Let's decide what we're going to be doing for this weekend. Oh! I decided to visit Sayori before Yuri comes over. I hope she's alright. Rather than asking, I simply I simply tell her I'm coming over, much like we did in the past. Once I reach Sayori's house, I knock on the door before entering it myself. Again, we used to play so often that we've made it a habit of simply entering each other's houses like we were family. The house is quiet. Oh, what's going on? Sayori isn't, Sayori isn't anywhere on the first floor, so I assume she's up in her room. It's already strange of her not to run down and greet me. I head up to her bedroom where I finally find her. Sayori? Hi, Loy. Oh, she's fine. Oh, I thought I was about to... I don't know what I was about to find, honestly. Considering how visual novels go. 
I sit down in her room. Sorry forces a, a smile, but it's easy to tell what she's thinking. But, uh, that she's different. There's a minute of silence between us. You haven't come over like this in a long time, have you? Ah, I guess you're right. As it has been a long time. Not much has really changed, has it? So I always remember it's as messy as it's always been. I also recognize the same stuffed animals and wall decorations that she's had for years now. <laughs> if you came over more often, it would be such a mess. That's because I ended up cleaning it for you. How come you suddenly wanted to come over today? Weren't you supposed to see Yuri today? Yeah, but how'd she know that? Yeah, how'd you know that? So Yuri had already left, left by the time we, were, we decided that last meeting. Monica told me. It's only natural for her to keep me informed about the festival preparations, right? Ah, that's true. But what about you? Aren't you going to be helping Monica today? Of course! But I'm just helping her, I'm just helping her online. We didn't plan to meet up or anything. Ah, so it's just me and Yuri then. Yep. There's more silence between between us. Sayori still uh, Sayori stares in a random direction. One thing about her behavior is uncharacteristic. I finally get the point. I just wanted to see how you were doing. After you left on Friday. When something's wrong, you can hide you can't hide it from me. I know you too well. So Sayori smiles, shaking her head. That's no good, Loy. Eh? Why can't it, it just be like it's always been? This is all my fault. If I didn't get so weak and accidentally express my feelings, if we didn't make that stupid mistake, and you wouldn't have been so worried about me at all. You wouldn't have come here. You wouldn't have been able. You wouldn't have even been thinking about me right now. But this is just my punishment, isn't it? I'm getting punished for being so selfish. I think that's why my world decided to have you come over today. It just wants to torture me. <laughs> Sayori. I grab Sayori by the shoulders. What on earth are you saying? Are you listening to yourself right now? I know something happened to you. There's no explanation for you to be like this. So tell me already. Until I know, I won't be able to stop thinking about it. Ah. Ha 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 Sorry gives me a little empty smile. You really put me in a trap, Loy. But... You're wrong. Nothing happened to me. I've always been like this. You're just seeing it for the first time. Seeing what? What are you talking about, Sorry? Hehehe. <laughs> You're really just going to make me say it, aren't you, Loy? I guess I have no choice this time. The thing is, I've had a really bad depression my whole life. Did you know that? Why do you think I'm late to school every day? Because most days I can't even find a reason to get out of bed. The reason is there to do anything when I fully know how worthless I am. Why go to school? Why eat? Why make friends? Why make other people put energy and caring to waste by having them spend time to spend it on me? That's what it feels like. That's why I just want to make everyone happy. Without anyone worrying about me. I'm in shock. I can't even figure out how to respond. How is it possible that Sayori kept this from me this entire time I've known her? She really wanted so badly for me just to just not think about her? Why, Sayori? Eh? Why is it that you've never told me about this? It almost feels like I've been betrayed as your close friend. Because if I knew, I would have done everything I could to support you. Even if there's only so much that I could do. I would have tried a little bit harder to make every day a little better for you. That's why I'm your friend. All you had to do was tell me. You don't understand at all, Loy. Why do you think I didn't tell you? Because if I told you, then you'd have to waste effort caring about me instead of doing important things. I don't want to be cared about. It's bittersweet when people try to care about me. It feels nice sometimes, but it also feels like a bat being swung against my head. <laughs> That's why I wanted wanted so badly for you to make friends with everyone else. Helping everyone to be happy together was the best thing for me. But then I discovered something else too. Seeing you make friends and get closer with everyone in the club, it feels like a spear going through my heart. So that's why that's why I decided the world just wants to torture me. Every path leads to nothing but hurt. <laughs> You're right, and I don't understand. I don't understand your feelings at all, Sayori. But I don't need to understand. Whatever it takes me to help you stop hurting. That's what I'll do. No, Loy. There's nothing. Nothing at all. There's, the only thing that could help has the only thing that could have helped is if everything could be like it always was. But I was selfish. I finally showed you what a horrible person I am. Tears streak down sight Yori's face. I made you join the literature club because I was selfish, and I was punished by my hurt my heart hurting in a way that I couldn't understand. And now you came here and I made you hurt too. I'm just weak and selfish. 
That's all I am. That's why I'm going to accept these punishments. Because I deserve every last one. Without thinking, I once again grab Sayura's shoulders. This time I pull her into a tight embrace. Ah! Loi. Sayori. I don't care if you feel selfish. I'm really happy that you convinced me to join the club. Seeing you every day makes it worthwhile enough. If I make friends with everyone else, then that's just a bonus. But please, never underestimate how much I care about you. I wouldn't have it any other way. Loi. Sayori isn't, uh, isn't hugging me back. Despite my arms being wrapped around her, Sayori's arms remain at her sides. She starts sobbing next to my ear. No. Don't do this to me. Please don't do this. Loi. Hi. Sayori barely manages to speak between her sobs. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing, but all I want is for her to know that I care. If you have it in you to call yourself selfish, then you have to let me be selfish too. No matter what it takes, I'll figure out what it what needs to be changed. I make the if I make these feelings go away, and if there's anything that you need me to do, you better tell me. I'll get mad if you don't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Gently, Sayori finally puts her arms around me in return. I don't know anything. It's all its all really scary. I don't understand any of my feelings, Lloyd. The only time I'm not feeling nothing is when I'm feeling pain. But your hugs are so warm. That's really scary, too. Sayori lets me go. As she does so, I let her go as well. Festival is tomorrow. Yeah. It's going to be fun, right? Yeah. How would you like for me to spend it all with you? Uh, um, uh, it's what I want. I promise. I, I think it would be nice then. Yeah. Sorry wipes her eyes. If I could spend the whole day here, I would. Of all days, this has to be the one where I have the plans. Maybe I should cancel. No, no, don't. Please don't. If you did that, then I would really wouldn't forgive you. But it's almost time for Yuri to meet me at my house. At the very least, do you want me to? Do you want to come along and help out? It would be fun. To my surprise, Shori shakes her head. I'm sorry. I don't know if that would make a very that would be very good for me today. You understand, right? Ah. It's kind of hard for me to fully understand. I'm trying my hardest. It's okay. Don't worry about it too much. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Alright. I look forward to it. To each, to each your own, you know? I promise you won't be weirded out. Yeah, I promise. Alright. The thing is, I'm kind of into knives. They're just so pretty. I, I can't help it! I don't know what it is. The combination of craftsmanship and a feeling of danger, maybe. Uh, what am I saying? Please don't think I'm weird for this. Haha. <laughs> you're really- you're laughing at me. No, I'm not laughing at you. It's just funny how nervous you get- you got about sharing. It's, well, an interesting thing to be into, I guess. But I think it kind of suits you. Suits me? Yeah, it's kind of intense. <laughs> Besides, it's a really cool looking knife. Can't deny that. It is, isn't it? Wait, was my TV was my TV on and I missed it? Okay, I'm seeing things. Ow! Lloyd! Why did you do that? I didn't expect it to be that sharp. I barely touched it at all. It's my fault. I should have warned you. This knife's extremely sharp. It can cut through skin like it's paper. How would you know that? Oh no. A small drop of blood trickles down the side of my finger. Here takes my hand and gives the wound a closer look. Ah. He stares at it and notices fidgets. If you're squeamish, I'll go wash off now. Ah. Wait, uh, that's me. Ah. Without me, Yuri puts my finger in her mouth and licks the blood. I mean, wound. I feel her tongue curl around my finger. As hard as I instinctively pull my hand back. This music does not match what is happening right now. Ooh. Please forgive me. I, I wasn't thinking. I... Yuri lowers her head, her face burning up. Yuri. This is the most embarrassing thing I've ever done. How did I do something like that? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Ah. Sure, uh, sure it was a little weird and it seemed to be my surprise. But I guess she was just trying to help, right? I take Yuri's hand to lick her index finger in return. What is going on? Loy! Did you really just do that? Now, now we're even. The ear just looks at me like I did something wrong. <laughs> I knew that would be a bad idea. If not for the sweet rumor of the jasmine oil, the air would be extremely heavy right now. You're so weird, Loy. Here. 
Right down to pat Yuri's face and neck with the towel. Ah. Something. They say ah a lot, don't they? I might say. I might start doing that as well. It's hot. I just didn't expect it. Sorry. I didn't want to use cold water. When I finished, I started to retract my hand. Yuri suddenly holds my wrist. Wait. Eh? Just for a little longer. It feels really nice. Ah. I keep my hand still, still against Yuri's neck. She looks into my eyes. It's an intense expression that I recognize from when she reads her books. Almost as if she's lost in days, enveloped by her own thoughts. She, bre she breathes against half. Uh, she breathes gently, half through slightly parted lips. What is happening? <laughs> is it the aroma of the jasmine oil giving me this dizzy feeling? Yuri's gentle fingers wrap around my wrist, sending a tingling sensation through my arm. And suddenly, her face seems to be much closer to mine than it was just a moment ago. Where's the horror in this? Come on! Oh, she must, she, she must like the warm. I'm assuming she likes knives because she's a murderer or something. Uh, and I assume she liked the warmth on her neck because it must have felt like blood. Because she was she letting the blood because she licked my finger and all that. She's just being subtle about it. Yuri takes a step closer to me and then briefly squeezes my hand. I kind of like that about you. Well... How am I supposed to respond to that? But I don't even get a chance as Yuri suddenly pulls back. S Sayori? Eh? Ah. Did she not put... Did she, did she not change not have anything on right now okay hi loy sayori just now we weren't <laughs> it's okay loy i stopped by to say hi uh, um well it's nice to see you i'm sorry but i'm already on my way to leave oh really that's too bad i'm sorry we're all but we'll all be together at the festival tomorrow so so that's fine, right? Of course! Sayori beams. Y yeah, so... I'll see you tomorrow. Clearly embarrassed, Yuri hurries off. Sayori raises goodbye after her. Sayori... I thought you didn't want to come over today. Haha, <laughs> well... I was, I was just thinking about her too, like while we were in there, I was like, I wonder how she's feeling now. I tried staying in my room. My imagination was being really mean to me. But I had to come here and see it for myself. See what? What are you talking about? You know, how much fun you were having with Yuri. Not close you got to her. It may, makes me really happy that you made such good friends. That's all that matters to me. She was starting to fall down Sayori's face. That's all that matters to me. Why am I feeling this way, Loy? I'm supposed to be happy for you. Why does it feel like my heart is splitting in half? I hurt so much. Everything hurts so much. This would be so much better if I could just disappear. Sorry, don't say that. It's true, Lloyd. If I wasn't here, then you wouldn't have to waste your sympathy on me. You wouldn't have to put up with me being selfish. Monica was right. I should just... Monica? Monica was right about what? Sayori. What I said before is true. I'm not going to let this continue. Caring about you like this isn't the burden in your mind is making it out to be. It's something that makes me happy. It's something that I wouldn't trade for anything else. So even if it takes an entire lifetime, I'm going to be by your side until you don't feel any more pain. But... Sorori looks away. I put a hand on her shoulder to reassure her. I'm scared, Loy. I'm really scared. What are you scared of, Sayori? I'm scared that... that I might like you more than you like me. Sayori? It's true, isn't it? I was weak and started to like you too much. I did this to myself. Loy. I like you so much that I want to die. That's how I feel. And, and, that's enough, Sayori. I don't want you to hurt anymore. I slide my hand down, down Sayori's arm and squeeze her hand in my own. Do you remember how I said I always wanted, to always know what's best for you? Do you still believe me? Wordlessly, Sayori nods. Even if you don't understand all of your own feelings for me, I mean, even if you don't understand all of your feelings, I know what you need most right now. What I'm going to give you. That's what I'm going to give you. Oh. Ooh, what do I do here? Wait. Hold on. Oh. I was looking right here at skip, and I thought it said slap, because I couldn't see the... I'm going to... I'm going to remember that. Um... 
what would, what, what would I really do in this situation? What would I really do? I love you. Eh. Those are my true feelings. So, there's no way you can like me more than I like you. I should have realized it sooner. I was spending time with everyone at the club, making new friends, and having fun with you every day. It helped me realize that you truly are the, that you are truly the most important person to me. That's why I'll accept any of your burdens. As long as we continue like this every day, with you by my side, then I'll now we'll both be happy. Lily. Suddenly, so Sayori wraps her arms tightly around me. Loy, is this really okay? Yeah. I would slowly read my arms and pull her close. You'll never have to let go of me again. I love you, Loy. I want to be with you forever. Me too. I feel Sayori's grip around me weaken a, a bit. What is this? Sayori. I'm supposed to be happy right now. I always thought this would be the happiest moment for me. But why? Even now, I want the rain clouds go away. They're not going away at all, Loy. It's okay, Sayori. It might take some time for things to get better again. No matter how long it takes, I'll be there every step of the way. That's all that matters right now. Uh, okay. I trust you. Sayori and I slowly release each other. So, I guess it makes a festival tomorrow a first date, huh? <laughs> what are you saying? I don't want to think about those things, you know? I don't, want to, I don't want things to be the same as I've always been. Even if we really are a couple. I don't know if I can handle anything more right now. It's really new and scary to me. I understand. We'll go at whatever pace suits you best. Hey, Loy? Sorry gazes at me once again, smiling sadly. Even if I get really, really sad. This is the best thing for me, right? Eh? I don't really understand what Sayori means by that. Are you saying that this is making you feel sad, Sayori? I... I don't know. I don't understand what I'm feeling. I feel like a burden of thorns when you told me you love me. That's why I want to trust you. You know what's best for me. Yeah. I do. That's my promise. I say that, but in reality I never felt more uncertain when it comes to Sayori. I know that I love her, and she loves me. I'm having as much trouble understanding Sayori's feelings as she is. Even though I can comfort her, I keep wondering if I should be doing something more or something different. I know these thoughts will come. I know these thoughts will continue to plague me until things are back to the way they were. Is that what Sayori meant by not wanting anything to change? I don't know. But I know that I'll give everything I got. Sayori's the most important person to me. And I'll do whatever it takes to have a happy future with her. Loy! You're the first one here! There's no music. Wait, what? Hold on. She said after her, your, my exchange with her yesterday. I kind of left her hanging this morning, you know? Exchange? Monica, you know about that? Of course I do. I'm the club president, after all. But I stammer, embarrassed. Does so I already really tell her about it that quickly? That we're a couple now? I didn't really plan on bringing it up with anyone yet. There's no music. This is this is different. different. Jeez. You don't know how the full story at all, so... Don't worry. I probably know a lot more than you think. <coughs> eh? Wonka's being as friendly as usual, but for some reason I felt a chill in my spine after hearing that. Hey, do you want to check out the pamphlets? They came out really nice. Yeah, sure. I grabbed one of those pamphlets laid out on the desk. Oh yeah, they really did. Something like this would definitely help people take the club more seriously. Yeah, I thought so too. I flipped for the pages. Each member's poem is neatly printed on its own page, giving it an almost professional feel. I recognized that Sumi and Yuri's poem was from the ones they performed during our practice. What's this? I flipped the Sayori's poem. It's different from the one she practiced. It's one that I haven't read before. Oh my god. Yo. Get out of my head, get out of my head, get out of my head. Get out of my head. Get out of my head before I do what I know is best for you. Get out of my head before I listen to everything she said to me. Get out of my head before I show you how much I love you. Get out of my head before I finish writing this poem. The poem was never actually finished, it just stops moving. Ah. What is this? Reading the poem, I get a pit in my stomach. Loy? What's wrong? Ah, uh, nothing. This poem feels completely different from everything Sayori has written. More than that, I, I changed my mind. I'm gonna get Sayori, so... Ah. Well, alright. Try not to wait too long, okay? I quickly leave the classroom. Don't strain yourself. Don't strain yourself! My, my new call is that out after me. 
I, qu I quickened my pace. There's no music. This is... What was I thinking? I should have tried a little harder for Sayori. It's not a big deal for her to at least wait for her to help or to help her wake up. Even a simple gestures walking, uh, of walking her to school make, me, make her really happy. Besides, I told her yesterday that things will be the same as they always have been. It's all she needs and what I want to give her. I reached Sayori's house and knocked on the door. I don't expect an answer when she's not picking up her phone either. Like yesterday, I opened the door and I let myself in. Sayori? She really is a heavy sleeper. I swallow. I can't believe I ended, I ended up doing this after all. Waking up in her own house. That really is something that a boyfriend would do, isn't it? In any case, it just feels right. Outside Sayori's room, I knock on her door. Sayori! Wake up, dummy! There's no response. Oh my god, please don't. I really didn't want to have to enter her room like this. Isn't that kind of a breach of privacy? But she really leaves me no choice. She only opened the door. Oh god. Oh, God. I freaking knew it. Oh, God. Oh, God. Uh... What the... Is this a nightmare? It has to be. This isn't real. There's no way this can be real. Sayori wouldn't do this. Everything was normal until a few days ago. That's why I can't believe everything my eyes are showing me. I suppress the urge to vomit. Just yesterday, I told Sayori I'd be there for her. I told her that I know what's best and that everything will be okay. And why? Why would she do this? How could I be so helpless? What did I do wrong? Confessing to her? I shouldn't have confessed to her! That's not what they already needed at all. She even told me how painful it is for others to care about her. Then why did I confess to her and make her feel even worse? Why was I so selfish? This is my fault. My swarming thoughts keep telling me everything I could have done to prevent this. I just spent more time with her, walked her to school, and remained friends with her like it has always been. Then I could have prevented this. I know I could have prevented this. Screw the literature club. Screw the festival. I just lost my best friend. Someone I grew up with. She's gone forever now. Nothing I could do could bring her back. This isn't the same game where I can reset and try something different. Yes, it is. I had only one chance that I wasn't careful enough. And now I'll carry this guilt with me until I die. I think my life is worth more than hers. But I still couldn't do what she needed for me. And now, I can never take it back. I never. 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 Oh my god. Um, uh, 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 there's two of them now? Mo Monica is replacing her. Yo, I've, I've played, I've played like two visual novels so far, Hatofu Boyfriend and Angels with Skelly Wings. In those games you date animals, birds and dragons. Okay, but that actually disturbed me. Okay, now, I'm not easily disturbed by stuff like that. Like I see a character hung by a noose in a horror game, like yeah, whatever. But that generally freaked me out when I saw that. Like, and it had a little glitching error exception. I heard something about playing the game with the files open. I wanted to do that. It's wow well, iffy about even putting this out, cause. I, have, I don't know how to edit it. I'm not good at editing to a point where I can edit the full screen in there while the files are out. I can't... I don't know how to do that. Um, but maybe something happened there? I don't know. But looking at this... <gasps> I can't do a new game! Wait, can I? What is this? Yo, that... Um... Oh, Lord. I see an annoying girl running towards me from the distance, waving her arms in the air. She's totally oblivious. That girl is... No way. Oh, God. 
Yo. Uh. I've always walked to school alone. I always tell myself about the time I meet some girls or something like that. But I'd never remember to join any clubs. I'm perfectly content just by on the average while spending my free time on games and anime. There's always an anime club, but it's not like there would be any, any girls in it anyways. Oh my god. Loy? Oh. Uh, Monica? Um. So is she? Um. Oh god. Yo, this is actually freaking me out. Like, I've played a ton of horror games. And I don't get freaked out easily, but this... Oh god, that was my phone, wasn't it? My, par my parents are home, okay. Oh, what the freak is going on here? And thus today marks the day I sold my soul to Monica and her yours will smile. Oh god. She's taking her place. Oh, God. Because <sighs> I was romancing her. That's why I flashed. Dude! Dude! Oh, my God. That's, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm, I'm done.